Hello everyone, welcome into our live YouTube Q&A for the month of July. Um, ben is joining me here. Can I start with Ben? I'm brought here. I'm nice and hot. I'm fine. I'm well. I'm in a brothel cart and so. Yeah. We're in the town Tassa. Uh, all of us are. I'm sure even everyone in Ireland watching is in the same boat, not just us on the continent of Europe. So uh, keep your comments coming in as usual. I love seeing them all come in and we'll get to them throughout the live. And of course, after this video ends, we welcome all the comments underneath as well. Your feedback, questions, whatever you want to say. So on here, Kesh, we'll get right into it. Ben, or what is the way of the wing? From Scarlet. Um, ni ekam and son gafole, Emma. Okay, I'll go for it so and you can answer. So Scarlett Kelly sends in a lovely question here. So hi, I'm a 15 year old American girl, but I'm over 70% Irish. So I've really been getting in touch with my heritage lately. Me and my family are even visiting Ireland in the fall. My biggest question with learning this language is the pronunciation. I've learned quite a bit with some research on the sheen of father and the way it changes vowel sounds. But my biggest confusion comes from the consonant sounds, like how BH is often pronounced like V or the O sound at the end of the word Sheena or Sheenu. It doesn't seem to make sense to my English knowledge of consonant pronunciation and as a Becca English calls them special sounds. Special sounds as in how C and H make CH in church in English or how G and N make N in NAT. You get my point. Uh, is there somewhere where I can learn the, phon the ph phonics and sounds of Gaelge or the special sounds? Does Bite Size offer courses and lessons in that? Once I have that down, I'm sure it'll be much easier for me to memorize and learn Irish words and grammar. So, Scarlett, Gurmila Mahagut, thank you so much for your question. Ben, I might pass the answer to you because it kind of applies to what you do uh, in the realm of Bite Size. Yeah, well, there are things that you can do um, with regard to what you're asking about, Scarlett, um, on Bite Size, and then you can do other things more generally. So we'll start with Bite Size first. Uh, we have Bite Size Bio, well, once a week, twice on a Tuesday, um, but gen people just generally um, attend one or the other of the sessions. But it's a conversation, a scripted conversation, um, role play session for an hour where um, you get to practice with a partner and I also read the script and give pointers on the grammar and the pronunciation and there's a particular emphasis on uh, pronunciation in that session and of course you get to ask questions about any words that you might find difficult um, such as hoglakahe or kolglakahe I ought to say <laughs> which seems out of all the scripts to be the word that people find most difficult in the Irish language you see um then of course there are elements of ashter um the self-learning uh, lesson platform on bite size uh, which um focus on uh, initial mutations so there'll be your urus and your shavus and that sort of thing and there are sound files that you can play um, back in order to hear those sounds and then there's also, as part of the reference pack, uh, a section called Dealing with Dialects, um, which in a way is relevant to your question. It looks at the differences in the preference for different sounds and structures and different dialects. And the reason why I say it's relevant to your question is that some of the examples that you give are sounds that appear to be coming from different dialects. Like when you say the BH being pronounced as a V, that's more of um, an element of Munster Irish. And then you talk about the OO sound at the end of Sheenu or Sheena. And so for instance, in Munster, Sheena would be Sheena, but further north, Sheenu or in Connemara. Um, so part of the confusion that you may be having about how things are pronounced may be that 
there's an inconsistency in what you're hearing because you're hearing words from different dialects. So certainly, specifically the dealing with dialect section of the reference pack would be helpful in that respect. But more generally, there's a site called fuemena.ie. So it's F-U-A-I-M-E-A-N-N-A.ie, where you can find all of even the most minute sort of constituent sounds of uh, words, phonemes, I suppose, in the Irish language. And not only can you find those, but you have um, sound samples or sound um, recordings of those sounds um, from Kirkuhina and Munster, from Kiarrua and Connemara, and from Guidor up in Donegal. So that's a really valuable resource. If you want to get really, really nerdy about it and go in and, you know, pick your dialect and see, <laughs> see uh, what you can find and what sense you can make of it. Um, as well as that, if you go to Unshupa Lauer, um, it's a website of a bookshop in Dublin. It's www.shupa, uh, S-I-O-P-A. Uh, Lauer, L-E-A-B-H-A-R, that's all one word, um, dot com. If you go into their school book section, there's a series called Osgebroch Lum. Um, that's A-S, new word, G-O, new word, B-R-A, father, C-H, new word, L-I-O-N. And that's a sort of workbook um, for practicing spoken Irish at primary school level that goes from preschool uh, all the way up to, I suppose, what you would call middle school in the States. Um, and now I don't have a copy of it myself, but having looked at it um, in, on the shop's website, I understand that you can access um, sound codes. There's an online sort of streamed or I don't know if it's download or streamed, but uh, there's a, a recorded element to it. So you practice, you listen, you practice, you listen. And it'll have little questions on, you know, how does the sound in, how does the A in Gabroch sound, you know, and you're, you can fill that in as you go along and learn progressively. So uh, I hope that's of some help to you, Scarlett. Really good advice from Agat Ben. Yeah, I was just thinking as well, we do also have on bite size from we which we ported over from our previous um from our previous platform onto our new platform, Ashley, which is crack out Irish pronunciation as well. And I've heard um really good reviews from our members. They really enjoy that. Um it's a video series where Owen goes through all of the different pronunciations of um vowels and some consonants so it'd be worth your while um trying out bite size at least and seeing if it's something that would suit you uh we have plenty of recordings on there on our website you can take it at your own pace i'm sure you have other things to be doing um so you can do it all in your own time and replay 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 and listen and repeat and you know practice makes perfect in that sense so yes and i'm sure it will get easier with time. So, Gormabat Scarlet, Os Shin. So, on Kaid Kesht Ella on Son, Ben and Gut and Son. That's Sean Garod on my lawn. And Sean Garod says, I would like to know if there's currently available a set of simple Irish language storybooks, just like the, one, the ones we had in English at primary school. It would be good if these little books could start at year one level for beginners and build up gradually to about year seven level, by which time the learner could understand and enjoy a good basic level of reading and spelling Irish. So what do you reckon, Emma? I'm sorry, folks, Emma seems to uh, <laughs> seem to have lost Emma there. So um, just looking at that question, Sean Garod, again, uh, I'd advise you to take a trip to the website of Unshuppa Lauer in Dublin. So that's Unshuppa, sorry, just Shuppa Lauer, S-I-O-P-A-L-E-A-B-H-A-R dot com. And if you go to the children's category, 
uh, you'll find a book series called Aber Lom, that's A-B-A-I-R, new word L-I-O-M. And that's the basic sort of school book that you're looking for. And um, like the series that I was telling Scarlett about, that runs from Ninon Yoga or um, junior infants up to sixth class. Um, so that should do the job. Also, there are two websites, um, leglath.com and leganish.com, um, where you can find um, uh, you can find written content that you can use for the same purposes as the books that you were looking for. And um, certainly one of those websites has a choice of different dialects as well, if you want to concentrate on a particular dialect. I think that um, those websites are also a resource for um, parents of children who go to Gaelskullina and for teachers in Gaelskullina as well. Uh, Emma, there you are. I am. Sorry, my laptop um, died of the heat there for a second. Oh, <laughs> I'm back. Um, yeah, oh, Leanish, August Leila. I'm a, I'm a big fan of both of those. They're really good. And the one with, um, for, as far as I remember, with Leanish.com, you can actually choose which dialect uh, your piece is in. So you, they have a selection of books. They've four I suppose that they call them bound the hand though three car and you can actually pick which dialect as you log on so when you listen to the accompanying audio it'll be read in your chosen dialect which is really nice as well for anyone that wants to really zone in on a certain conant as going get so shinna lauer uh, I suppose I'll go to the next question before my laptop gives up on me again <laughs> so the next one is from Samuel and Samuel has, uh, well, I can understand this a little bit. So Samuel McDonald says, the biggest challenge holding me back is being stuck in Australia. And although there is a large Irish expat population here, they do not speak Irish and or are maybe embarrassed to do so. Uh, my grandmother spoke perfect Irish and was born and raised in the Gaeltacht of Nor Northwest Mayo. I sadly was never able to learn from her, but I'm now on a journey to honour my ancestors by continuing to explore Irish language resources and keep up to date with the Bite Size Irish YouTube channel. Thanks for all your brilliant work, Owen and team. So, Gurmila Magath, Samuel, I understand being abroad, being stuck abroad. Um, I don't know, could it happen to um, Ben? I suppose it, it brings us back to what we were talking about at the start of this uh, live stream about Bite Size Bio and the opportunity to attend it at two different times. Yeah, certainly um, we have people from all over the world attending Bite Size Bio. Um, the 10 o'clock Irish time on a Tuesday morning one would be the best one for Samuel if you were interested in attending. That would be about 7 o'clock in the evening, depending on where you are. Um, and, um, yeah, it's an opportunity to um, certainly do the scripted work with other people. And there's also an element of chat at the beginning and when people have a bit of spare time when they're finished going through their role play with the scripts and um you know of course people get to ask questions and we fre frequently go off topic anyway so that's a valuable resource for somebody who doesn't have the opportunity to practice with other people in real life though obviously it may not be enough for some people as well um, and it is quite structured it's certainly a valuable resource um, that you can use once a week i mean there is um common Gaelic in Australia as well. Um, I'm not sure where they are based. I know that they do have lessons and conversation groups and that sort of thing. Um, their website is gaelic.org.au forward slash common. That's C U M A N N. So Samuel could have a look there, but of course Australia is a very big place too, so they might not be, you know half an hour down the road um but it's worth looking into as well what do you reckon mm -hmm. yourself emma 
Yeah, um, I was thinking to recommend also peg.ie. You can check online there. As far as I know, you can check if there's online, maybe not all over the world. Well, all over the world, as far as I'm, I'm aware now. And you can check for maybe online meetups. As you said, Australia is large, but... Um, Maybe there could be an online Kirkakura that would suit your timing a little bit better because I know people struggle with times, um, especially with anything online in Ireland. So that might suit also checking peg.ie because there's definitely in-person meetups. I know that they do announce them uh, from the States and I'm sure if there was one going on in Oz that it would be up there. Uh, announced and actually just to I suppose tie us in with the, this ties us in with the next question mm. uh, from from Stephanie Martin uh, she says my biggest challenge is not having anyone to practice with I've never spoken to a person in the Irish language and would love to do so on a regular basis so that's the same the same advice for you Stephanie that to well bite size bio runs every week I run a glare cooker mugger which is a class or a call once a month it will actually take place next week where we practice reading and also grammar questions or anything pronunciation for anyone who wants to practice their pronunciation with me and reading aloud and get some feedback uh i do that once a month and if none of that suits you then have a look on peg.ie and see if there's anything going on in your local area because it's not just in ireland there are things uh, going on around even if you were if you so happen to be in Germany I know there's a monthly meetup uh, uh, with Conor Nguelga Berlin and Alexander Platz if anyone is interested in that as well also online actually it's by we it's bi-monthly one online one in person so there the the advice that is the advice that we have I think for you join bite size you can get online and talk with other members every single day uh, via typing in a in our online pubble but also then you have ben's weekly class and my monthly class uh, which would help you build you know your confidence and also build a relationship with other other learners all over the world bro kerkelor on kid kest ella ben come down um i'll catch the gums oh chris um mm -hmm. Chris is a regular on Bite Size Bio and is very active on the forum. And his question is in Irish. Um, so, dear Chris, Nilain Rod Eska, nothing is easy, Kakinta for sure. Being Gachra Duhlanach, everything is challenging. Martian Fain, all the same. To say in Duhlanus Mo, Dumsa Er Lyant, the biggest challenge for me anyway. Um, no, Fuimnu. Um, is pronunciation. Orintus fadelum rodeg and anahimpli ara oskailge. Sometimes I can say something very simple in Irish, agus bian she cream, and it is precise. Achni higan and dinne, but the person doesn't understand. Which must be frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a difficult thing. I suppose I know that I can understand Chris when he speaks to me. So perhaps it may also have something to do with the ear of the person who is listening as well. And when you're learning, I suppose the, often the people who you're talking to are learning likewise, and uh, it may not be so easy for them to uh, pick out the words and pick out the sounds when mm -hmm. they're speaking to a, a fellow learner. Yeah. Yeah, in theme lat, because I, I understand Chris when he speaks to me. Um, so, and maybe if there was a word that you weren't sure of, and that's the word that, you know, you're getting misunderstood on, just keep repeating it until they do understand you. That's that's the way you have to do it sometimes. Uh, but it's it's a it's a common thing, especially when you're dealing with other learners who might be learning a different dialect to you or might not be familiar with that word. So it's not the fact that you're pronouncing it wrong. They might not have a clue what the word means in the first place. Uh, or they might have only read it and never heard it out loud. There's many, there's many reasons for it. So don't let anything like that um you know deter you from constantly practicing and speaking but chris so the could go to go so your irish is brilliant um, and we we know that so very I valid. Thing, sorry i suppose the other thing about when you're learning is if you learn a new way to say something or if you new, learn some new terminology you may be anxious to use that 
but somebody else may not have learned it or encountered it. So mm -hmm. sometimes you might need to find a simpler way of saying this thing that you're saying, like you might say, Canada V2 America, how long were you in America? America? And they might not understand Canada. So you may need to say, or mm -hmm. or you know different mm -hmm. ways of saying the same thing and try those out <laughs> getting progressively simpler and see if that works that's good practice as well to broaden mm -hmm. your own vocabulary on different um, phrases and rephrasing things so don't let it um don't let it worry you too much it's very it's definitely a common thing i know it from when i was learning german and i was in a class full of other german learners and i was using a word and you know vice versa so i wouldn't i wouldn't well on it too much so the good to hurry knows chris um so lanert come on so uh i'll read the next question i suppose let me have a look uh the next cast is from carol carol hall and carol says i have difficulty hearing words i just hear sounds i like this question and uh, <laughs> so well my number one would be to try and find something that you can read when you're listening to something. That's not always possible, especially when you're talking to someone because you can't have a transcript while they're speaking to you. But there are definitely uh, online resources that we've already mentioned and some other ones maybe. The the one that I know, again, I, I sing the praises of it because it is really, really, really useful is Leonish and Leilat. As I said, you have a book your choice, pick whatever you want and have a listen with it. And of course, on Bite Size, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sound recordings. And we also have the word written down and the phonetic spelling of it. So you have three different ways to kind of consume the information of the word and the spelling, you know, the real spelling, the sound spelling, and then the recording itself. The other thing, for this would be uh, Neil, our colleague's uh, podcast, Nooth Wowl or Slow, Slow News. This is news read slowly. You can find that on, if you just Google Nooth Wowl, you'll find it on most platforms. And the nice thing about this is it's not just the news read slowly. There is a transcript provided as well. So you can read along with it, see the words as you hear them. And I very i i understand this only hearing sounds and not understanding the words themselves when i watch something in another language i often put on um the subtitles in that same language because i i feel like i need to see the word to understand fully what's being said you know um so definitely even if you are consuming anything maybe on tg car try and see it's they're not brilliant for always having um subtitles but if there are subtitles in Irish put them on instead of you know in English but I don't know TG Cahar aren't excellent for always providing um English or Irish subtitles but what what is good is their um I suppose what even to call them Mulchgale is is the name of the of the site I'll type it in there Mulchgale and what they do is they do little mini videos two three four five minutes and I think it's .com, I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Mullschgale.ie, excuse me. It's of course, it's .ie. Um, they actually, all of their subtitles are in Irish. So I really, I'm a big fan of that website because you get to read it and uh, see it and listen to it at the same time. So mullschgale.ie, if you, if you pop on there, you can find really interesting local news uh, from all around the country of Ireland, different things going on, and it's subtitled in Irish. So you can really hear um what's being said ben yeah i don't have a lot to add to that um but certainly making that connection um between a written transcript and what you're hearing helps and it will help even when you're just listening as well because you'll have some sort of visual representation in your head of what those sounds look like and it'll be reinforced each time you do something like read transcript while listening but then even while you're listening alone, it'll still be reinforcing what you did while using the transcript um, and strengthening your learning. And certainly Newthwell is really, really good in that regard because not only is it slow, but it's very, very clear as well. 
So it's easy to pick out the sounds and to make that connection between what you're hearing and what you're reading. So it helps to have that sort of visual representation of the sound that you can take away with you. But it also, of course, helps with pronunciation as well, because you can choose different dialects in the Ucht mm -hmm. And of course, bite size bio is very good in that regard, too, because that's what you're doing. You're getting a video recording of the core of the conversation initially. Um, then you have the transcript. You also have a phonetic um, a transcript that has a phonetic guide for each line. You're practicing it with a partner. You're hearing what they're saying. Then you're doing it in reverse, doing what you already heard. And then you're getting pointers from me as well um, towards the end. So that's the sort of thing that you need to be doing to make that connection and um, to give you just a guide to where words are ending and where words are beginning and um, how different words are structured, how many syllables they have them in them, and that sort of thing. Now, Tom Erma Ian or reached. <laughs> it looks like Emma's computer has gone down again. So um, I'm just going to have a look now and see what other questions we have. Um, yeah, Jean McCulloch says, I've tried in person, Gramaka Jean, I've tried in person, I've tried in person classes from native speakers, online classes, Rosetta Stone, etc., even one on one online classes. I would say that none have incorporated enough for repetition exercises. I try to do that myself, but often I, re but of I often repeat incorrect pronunciation or incorrect grammar. I tried to use bite size, but had difficulty with the website. This was several years ago. Any suggestions? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, um, I'll just address the bite size um, element of it first. Um, I've referred to bite size bio several times. Um, prior to this, and again, um, this has relevance um, in terms of what you're asking about. We do, <laughs> there's a strong element of repetition in Bite Size Bio because we have a cycle of scripts that goes up to, I think, 13. And when we get to the end of that, we start again, which may sound boring, but um, repetition has its value as a, a method of learning as well. And it's interesting because by the time people have gone through the whole thing and returned to number one, they find that when they start again at the beginning, they have indeed made progress. And that uh, is a very rewarding thing for them. So uh, it doesn't do any harm to return to the same material again, but it certainly is rewarding to find as well that you've improved since the last time that you did it, which in our case would be maybe three months prior. Um, also, of course, Bite Size is a self-learning platform and you can do the lessons as many times as you want. Um, so it depends on uh, how energetic you're feeling about the repetition. Sometimes it's hard to force it on yourself. Um, but certainly it's a really, really strong learning tool. I went to the Christian Brothers and that's how we learned an awful lot of things. The difference is that when you have a class room full of children, they can't escape. But when you're trying to teach adults, uh, a lot of people just don't have the stomach for that sort of learning, and that's understandable. And um, so they have a tendency to shy away from it. But if that's the way you want to learn, yeah, certainly there are ways of doing it, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. And we also have a new platform um, on Bite Size Asher. So would you like to say something about that, Emma? Yes. So um, I know you might have had difficulty some years ago for whatever reason that might have been but we have in march we switched over to a brand new platform and new interface everything it's very user friendly most i haven't heard any complaints yet anyway about it and we've had good good reviews on it all and m minimal problems getting on there so i would give us another chance because uh, i think that it might suit you Judge, here, judging from the fact that you've said that you like repetition, you have all the repetition in the world. Uh, you can 
keep playing over and over and over again and you can go back and do the lessons as much as you possibly can or want uh, as opposed to going to a class where the class naturally moves forward and if you miss out on something or there's something that you don't really understand you might be you know you might be reluctant to ask the teacher to go back over it whereas here it's a self-study class you can go back over it yourself in your own time so give us another chance okay and if you do have any problems you can contact our email and we'll get it sorted for you as well we won't leave you uh stuck not being able to log on or anything like that so next question let me see um well what's coming in on the chat i see you're going you're all having a really nice um conversation yeah. there. there's um, one there from owen o'lachlan and mm -hmm. uh, even in dublin i've struggled to find fluent speakers but i know they must be here i've always found academic context difficult but after school realized that when i immersed i learned rapidly hmm. well i know that there are meetups um w in dublin quite often of fluent speakers um the club conra which is linked with conor na in um dublin there is also um a comedy night that happens, which is also seems to be great fun. I've never been there myself. I only watch it from abroad myself. Mm -hmm. Well, watch the adverts, everyone saying how great great fun it is. And um, so they do stand up comedy and skits and all of that. Osgoilge. And that takes place as far as I know in the Club Conra. Uh, it's called Goilgori, um, which is a nice one. And there's pop up pop up Gwail so on and so forth. I'm not so familiar with Dublin myself. I've only been there a handful of times. So uh, I can't I can't give much more advice, but they're definitely the, the Gwail Gory are in Dublin. They're very much there's there it's alive and well up there. Uh, so try and get involved there, have a look online and ask around. Twitter is a great one. Um if you just tweet out um anything ask Gaelga Dublin you might find people are, are coming for you to help you. Kadela, um, what's the best method or tool for spelling Oscoilge? Well, Alexander, practice, uh, learning the alphabet and practicing. We were talking about it at the start, even the idea of crack Irish pronunciation, anything like that. Um, and reading, starting off basic, yeah. I think reading is the best way to learn to spell in any language. Just read mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reading. So start off with any of the uh, resources that we've provided earlier in the stream or in the video and give some a go and just get used to the way that the 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 language works. You know, that, you know, even this first question about how the BH makes a V sound, well, you then, you know, you, you link it up that way. So, yes, reading and practice. Um, Kadela, we got some other entries in. So as you know, this this whole video is about your biggest challenges when you're learning Irish. Now, some were questions and some were kind of, um, I suppose, more just their own, their worries or their challenges. And um, one person said time. And I was trying to think of a, of a good answer for this. Um, and unfortunately, it is, you know, if you want to learn something or do anything, you have to set aside some time uh, to do it. So if your challenge is time, then maybe my only advice would be to try and incorporate the language into your daily life. So when you're doing whatever you have to do, uh, you're cleaning or you've plenty of things to be doing, maybe put on Irish language radio or an Irish language podcast or a song, something like that. And um, when you're driving, perhaps try and put it on on the radio. Um, or set aside five minutes of your day just to go through some vocabulary. And the other thing I would say as well is, I don't know, is everyone on social media, but I am a big fan of this kind of passive learning on social media and online. If you follow some accounts, let's say you're on Facebook or Instagram, whatever uh, whatever platform you might use, follow some accounts in, in Irish or Irish language accounts. And as you're scrolling, as many people do, um, 
you know, you might come across a post in Irish and you might find yourself reading it and understanding it or not understanding it, but then might say, oh, I wonder what that word is. And then you go and look it up and there you go. You've learned a new word. So a lot of people nowadays spend plenty of time on social media and that's their downtime. And that's not your study time. Um, or people get distracted. That was another another worry. Well, people get often distracted by social media. So why not try and incorporate those? Get distracted in Irish. Exactly. <laughs> so follow some accounts on, on Instagram or Facebook and Twitter and just let it, you know, you never know. Um, that's what I do as well with, uh, with other languages I'm learning. I Sometimes I can't be bothered to read them or try and understand them, but sometimes I'm in the mood to try and, you know, ha read read what people are saying or, you know, look at their stories and listen to them speaking in whatever language. So hmm. that would be the only thing I can do. Um, set aside some time or else if you can't and you like a certain thing, if you're interested in listening to music, listen to Irish language music but you have to have to dedicate some time um to mastering anything you want to do not just Irish yeah and s set small realistic goals as well if you can mm -hmm. achieve those then that is you know reinforcing it's encouraging and it's a bit of mishnach a bit of courage to continue um I mean, I think it's much better to do a little and often rather than just say, ah, I just don't have time for this, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do a little bit less of the things that we don't need to do so much of and just a tiny bit more of the things that we do want to do. And it doesn't take much of a change to do that. But certainly, I think with lockdown and all of that, people found that they had a lot more spare time or that the spare time that they had had to be used at home. So they started to do things that they don't necessarily have the time to do anymore. Like my children started playing instruments and back at school now, they don't have the same amount of time to do that sort of thing. You can't spend two hours doing the piano just because you feel like it. So people can't spend two hours practicing their gaelic just because they feel like it. So I suppose just maybe find some element, element of it that you really enjoy and mm -hmm. say 10 minutes a day for that or 15 or whatever it is that you can manage and do yeah. that as long as you can something might change and you might be able to do more exactly or you might just find it easier to, mm -hmm. to fit it in yeah yeah so um i don't think there's any other major questions there's just one here um that i i liked hang on um on Rodis Dakri Dum um Igiri Rosna Runa Hishkant, Marni Lowry and Sheed on Dohan come out. Yeah. I I get that fair enough. But again, practice makes perfect and you get used to the way people speak as well. Um I even find that in English I find it more difficult to understand certain people than others. Um and there's a mix of characters on Rosna Rune, so some are definitely easier to understand than others. But I think it's a good practice as well to kind of, you know, you have to always be on your toes, toes listening. Um and also you can have subtitles, ask Gaelige. I'm very sure they have subtitles, ask Gaelige. Do they for us, Narun? I don't watch it often enough now to check. I don't watch it, so I don't know. I've only, I only dip in and out of it, like when, but as far as I know, you can have subtitles. So that might help as well. Um, as I said, linking the words with the um, sounds. Yes. Okay. So um, I think. That is all. Brad says, I find the cheat sheets of great benefit done regularly, but of course, practice is the big thing every day if possible. Well, that's it. That's our motto here. So, Gormagat, Brad, um, as Shin. Yes, I think that's all we have. So, I suppose, you know, everyone has challenges in learning any language or doing anything. So, you're, you're, your worries aren't, you know, just your own. Everyone, everyone goes through some sort of challenges. So, practice set realistic goals, take it easy, take it on your own time. That's what bite size is good for. That's what I really do like. You can work on your own, on your own pace and as you like. And if something doesn't suit you, you can go and do something else in the course. It's all up to you. Um, so yeah, and then you have the added benefit if you are a GROW member to meet every week with Ben and once a month with me and chat with me every day as well on our bite size public platform. So Shinny, 
I think we might leave it there because my laptop isn't my biggest fan tonight. So apologies for dipping in and out there. It's overheating because it's 40 degrees here in Germany. So um, <laughs> I think the laptop's feeling it as well. So Gurmila Mahagov Galer, Gurmahagutsa Ben. That's Gurmahagutsa Emma. August Beme, a kind live on Visha Kuing and take it easy. And yeah, we welcome all comments and everything. And all of the notes will be up on our blog after this video with all of the links and everything that we've talked about. So if there's anything that you might have missed that didn't go up on the screen, it'll be available uh, later on the links in the bio below. So, Slongafolin, Gurmila Mahagwiv. Slongafolin, Gurmila Mahagwiv.